Morning guys, James here down in a very blustery Swanwick Marina. We're just taking apart the last boats from the British Motor Yacht Show that's just finished. And today we've got something quite exciting for you. So a couple of these boats, they're sold, but we're taking them off back to another marina in Southampton where they'll stay until they are onward shipped to their new destinations. And today we're gonna to run an 88 yacht out for you. We obviously covered a couple of these as walkthroughs on the channel. We did a little bit of docking on one before, but today I want to run this as if it was an owner operator. So we're actually going to do this just with a single crew and myself just to show you what it would be like experience sort of couple on board and how we would work the maneuvering the lines getting set up for departure and then arriving into another marina in a couple of hours time so behind us on the water here is a 76 yacht and the 88 is tucked in alongside her what we'll be doing this is quite a tight maneuver it's not something typically you do as an owner but we've got a bit of space behind us here and there's a finger pontoon down the other side. I'm going to back this one out into this spot and then off out to sea. Sea on the flag's pretty fresh here, probably blowing 25 knots with increasing gusts. So it'll be a test for the hydraulic thruster systems today. Um, our colleagues are also going to be on this 76 running along with us. I'll just take you on so you can see what we're going to be doing. So I haven't powered the boat up or anything yet. I'm just going to give you a full startup procedure and show you how this will all work. You see down beside us here, very, very tight on this finger. So boats like this not normally kept in places like this, but hopefully with a little bit of luck, we should be able to get this out and away without too much hassle. So as with all the Sunseekers, keys are in the aft cockpit somewhere, and that gives us the ability to turn the boat on remotely without having to go inside and find the main switch panels boat's been put to bed so all the furniture's in here from the boat show uh, maybe we'll have a chance to have a look around her in a bit more detail in the next couple of hours as we head down the river and out into Southampton water so these take a few minutes to come to life just going to power up some systems here When we first turn the power on, there's a couple of alarms that come on, which is just telling us that there is uh, there's power going to various systems. So we've got two 24 inch multifunction displays up here on the dash. And I'm just gonna do a startup procedure with you so you can see exactly how these work. So MTU engines, these are the largest 1950 horsepower engines that go on this hull, really does get up and go pretty well just going to turn these on and allow everything to boot back up lots of little playing fingers here over the last few days at the boat show so we're just going to check everything is as we expect uh, we've got seven and a half thousand liters of fuel on board so plenty for the very short trip we'll be doing just show you around the bridge here just the single helm chair on this particular one my VHF plugged in on there so we're going to need that in the not too distant future for port control. So these are all just starting to come to life. So you have an engine display here, which obviously gives things like temperatures, pressures, fuel burn and what have you. The two big multifunction displays up in front. Uh, this is our CM8 system. We'll often hear this referred to in the videos that we do, but that's basically uh, a lot of digital switching on the boat as well as uh, generator control and what have you. We've got a little jog dial here, which allows you to control the screens without having to leave your seat. And then we've got things like the camera system running through cycling at the moment through the other views on the, the platform and the engine bay and what have you. Uh, autopilot control here, this is a steering system. And then we have the all important stabilization as well. So we're gonna leave this helm now. I'll just take you around. We won't be using the side door today. We'll do our maneuvering from up top. We'll just take you up and show you what we're going to see from the upper helm. So a boat like this is configured, we'll take up to four crew down in the aft of the boat. This particular one is configured with two bunk bed cabins. I'll just show you around now what we're seeing here. From up top, the view down the port side, so we can't actually see any water there between the pontoon and the boat at the moment. It's going to show how tight this is going to be. 
and then off the back here you can see the space we have to work with there's about 40 foot behind us at the moment the boat is getting on for nearly 90 foot long so we've got to get well back all the way into that corner before we're able to uh, to get past the end of the finger pontoon here and away in order to give us a little bit more room what we'll do is remove this 76 forward another captain will be on here so we'll untie our lines he will move forward around two meters it'll just give us a little bit more room on this corner so i can bring my stern into here i will then sit back there he will come out and then we'll be away we've got as always about 25 minutes down the river handball here to open water then we're taking a right into Southampton water and running up to Ocean Village it's a pretty typical journey if you're away for a weekend with your family and whilst you might typically find these run as a as a proper commercial boat with full-time crew on do have experienced owners running this sort of thing with just their families so say we're going to show you today how it's possible with the two of us I will just before we cut the camera just to get the last few bits set up just show you down in the back here the optional third station controls so no steering obviously back here just your throttle and thruster controls we may or may not use this when we get into ocean village but it is a handy place if you're med style docking you'd have a boat either side of you just coming in here on the stern it is uh, much easier then to see the visibility around the back and what have you so just a couple of minutes waiting for the crew to come back down for the other boat and we'll get set up join us back on board so obviously before you leave the dock, we do need to do a quick engine check. So I'm just going to pop the back door open here. This is the crew space down in the back. We're going down into the bowels of the boat now. So this is, I say, very much a working area. They've got a repeater of a lot of the kit we saw up top earlier. Not going to go into too much detail with these. I say we've obviously covered several of these on the channel before. I'll just give you a quick look in the engine room at these fantastic, beautiful, V12 engines, say they're um, sequential turbo system, so they really do get up and go for a, a large lump of 65 plus tons. You can see we've got two generators outboard here, either side, hot water tank up here above us. Uh, we've got space to put a water maker and neck another um, hanging cradle in here if you want to, and we've got all the filtration systems, fuel cleaning system, and all the isolation transformers for the electrical shore power system. Just how clean and clinical this one is. Just gonna pop the lid open. I can show you a couple of little checks we do. So we've got strainer baskets down there. All the seacocks are open as I only moved the boat in last week. Just show you what we're, what we're checking out. So these are our weed filters on the intakes. Uh, engines obviously being digitally controlled these days not really a need to come down and check things like oil levels and what have you we've done very little running since we did all of that when she left the pool last week to come up for the show so i'm quite happy that all is good in there so you can hear a little alarm going off in here so we just have a quick look at the panel we can see what it's telling us exterior crew door is currently open so we can acknowledge that and the alarm will stop Obviously, if the boat was fully crewed, these are all important things to be mindful of. Often when the boat's going off to sea, what have you. Big heavy duty door on the back here. So shut that one down. So we're just gonna go back in here. Let me get the generator fired up. I'm going to use generator today so that we can run the stabiliser system. So you can see on the main bus panel here, we just disconnected the shore power, which would otherwise have some lights on here. And we're just going to go through start up. It's that simple. You can see engines now running. We've got the shore power onto the bus there. And that now will run all of the AC pretty much on the boat. The second generator is really if you're running max load all of this cooking equipment, all the aircon on, etc., all at once does give you the extra power, but also a bit of redundancy if you're running certainly as a charter boat, a little bit more redundancy maybe if you're out in the Croatian islands and what have you. So we'll let that just get warmed up. 
not just going to start my engines quite yet until the guys are back and joining us on board. Okay, guys are just getting set up next door, so I'm going to get us powered up. So we've obviously got the ignition keys on down here. A little momentary tap on there. We've got little green lights to confirm we have control on the bridge. Let's get them fired up into life. See the RPMs coming up on the display. For those of you interested, we're doing around 10 litres an hour there per engine at tickover. These have a range of between 12 and 1500 nautical miles, depending on who you talk to and what sort of speed you run them on. Hydraulic thrusters, loads of power in these, so that's gonna be a useful feature today for sure. I'm sorry I was gonna get the drone out, but it's just that little bit too windy today to concentrate on boats and drones and the space we've got to work with. So you're gonna to have to imagine this one along with us today as we leave. So just talking to the guys on the 76 next door, what we're basically going to do here is take our lines off. We're going to come across and rest alongside this pontoon. Obviously from up here, I can't see that. We're going to sit in here. They are going to then reverse out into the gap behind us. And then they'll tease themselves away and we shall drift back and exit with them. Take a couple of minutes just to get the lines squared away ready for departure and we'll be back online ready to throw them off so. okay so we've got a little camera up top there i'm going to try and cut in some footage to show you what i'm doing on my controls just going to let the boats naturally drift across the reference point we've got that little yellow post down there to give me an idea of where the boat is just got to be careful tide is still on the way out at the moment which means it's coming from our bow to our stern wind is varying sort of from around here to here at the moment so it'll be on our broad side as we turn to leave the dock still got a few lines here joining up the two boats so we're going to take the lines off and then we'll be away little movements on here you can just see touching touching these they're progressive thrusters so the more you push the more power you have we've activated our throttle control up here which is taken over from the bridge downstairs and that just means everything's available up here to us just gonna check I'm not going to use my steering wheel in the maneuver but on the autopilot control down here we can see where the rudders are currently facing once we get a bit of water under the props and over the rudders we'll have a bit more steerage guys are just discussing down here which rope belongs to which boat before we cast off. So good to use a reference point just alongside us I'm using a flag pole which is on the land and that just gives us a reference to whether we're drifting forwards or backwards. And as long as we can stay parallel in the berth, we shouldn't have any problems of rubbing alongside anything. So I'll just give you a view from the side, what I can see over the, over the back here. We do have these overhangs. If I was running this as an owner operator, I'd have some wing cameras on the back here. Now I'm where my bow's going. Tim's just coming up onto the bridge of this one. And he'll be easing off backwards very shortly. Wind's just picking up a little bit just to add to the fun. We've got a couple of fenders down over our port side so there's no problem in terms of resting on that finger pontoon if we need to. You can see they're just getting set up and they'll be off. So they're going to back into that space back there quite tight and obviously their thrusters and engine prop wash will give a little bit of effect to us as well so just need to bear that in mind as they carry out their maneuvers so 
so off he goes. Nice thing with these large yachts, once you're comfortable with the space around you, is that they do actually sit in the wind quite nicely. The wind eventually, when it gets hold of them, the momentum to stop them can be rather challenging. But initially, they do weigh a fair amount, and that does mean they'll sit quite steady. So we're just watching on that pile over there. And he's just starting to bring his nose round there. So very little I can do now is just stay here and wait for him to get out. We've got a pile in front of us here, which makes my life a little bit more tricky at the front. Don't have any room to go, but you can see he's pretty much away from there. Very experienced, been with us for years. And he's our full-time in-house captain. So he's currently broadside in the tide and the wind now, obviously just teasing her out. So Stuart on the back here is going to be my eyes and ears. Generally for docking and manoeuvres, I'll have him up here. A little bit easier to communicate. You'll hear the crews using lapel mics and what have you to talk to each other. You'd have maybe somebody down on the, on the bathing platform. So they're away. So our turn to get out now so you can just see teasing the boat backwards once we're clear of that pole we can back in and there you can see she's heading off so still good visibility from back here So I'm going to keep the boat pretty much parallel with the wind as it is at the moment until we're ready to bring the nose round just to give us as much time as possible. I'm just going to set the camera down for a sec. Hopefully you can still see what we're doing. ready to start coming round on the nose. Just little touches on the throttle controls. Pretty much clear now on the front. Just going to tease that nose round now. Just checking on the back end. We're okay, just spin the camera around so you can see what we're seeing from back here. We've got a camera there you can see on the stern, which is just giving us a view on the back. Give you a view down there. Pretty tight here. We we'll come and have a quick look over yeah. this side. You can see what we've got there. Looks like we're pretty much out of here. Nice thing with the powerful hydraulic thrusters is that they never run out of steam. They do obviously take their power off the gearboxes. So once we use engine drive, the efficiency of the thrusters is diminished. <clears throat> but as soon as it's back into neutral, we have lots of power there. And we can get underway. So 
So hopefully you can still see on that forward camera there, the view ahead of us, coming down the fairway here. This is normally geared for boats around 55 feet, this particular fairway. We get a bit of momentum underway and then the rudders will take over and we'll have a bit of steering. So boat straight into gear and we're doing four and a half knots. So we do have to be careful. Obviously six knot speed limit here on the handball. To watch here in the summer months, the old paddle borders. So we'll get out into the main channel, just spin you around so you can see. Still the view we've got from up top here. So we'll take the boat out into the middle and then we will Stick this one into a stern now. This one forward, check we're clear. A little bit of RPM. And this one, hear the turbo spool. Sound lovely, these engines really do. Rolls Royce parent company of MTU. They are the absolute definition of perfection in the boat world. And what you tend to find on yachts from around 25 meters and upwards. So we're out. We'll just square our steering back up. So the wind is off on this on this port side now. So working against a little bit of tide here. And we've got around 25 minutes to open water here on the handle. So just to run you through what we've got on board. Uh, no chart card in the plotters at the moment, so this isn't going to show you much information. So I'm working today off my iPad, just like you'll often see pilots doing. This is typically how most of your passage planning and what have you is done. So we've got things like the tide here. You can see the little graph down the bottom that we've just been checking out what it's doing. The river here on the handle is access all states. So we just come out, give you an idea. We are at the moment all the way up the top here. And we'll be working our way down into Southampton water. I tend to work the boat one throttle and then the other in and out of gear in tight port like this. You can see the speed here, very easy to slip just over the six knot limit. It's more of a wash limit as much as anything to stop the riverbank erosion and also upsetting all the the boat's moored up here on the river. We've got around two and a half thousand boats here on the river. So it is important to do your part. Uh, obviously swinging moorings and, and fixed riverside pontoon vary massively in price. So you've got the option on these mid-river pontoons here. Long, long waiting list with the various private mooring contractors and also the Hamble River Harbour Master themselves. So we just got a turn to make here around this channel marker. Looks like the hunting in front is going to give us a bit of space. Just a quick fast forward here as we come further down the river. Hamble Harbour Master, Hamble Harbour Master, this is Sunseeker 88 yacht, over. Campbell Harbour Master, this is Sunseeker 88 Yacht. For your information, just departing outbound Swanwick Marina, heading for Ocean Village. Over. Yeah, 88 Yacht, that's uh, all copied. There is um, an inbound uh, vessel from um, the Oryx. Uh, other than that, there's no other reported large movements. Just monitor 68, till you are clear of the river. Copy that, listening 68, out. So we've just done a quick VHF call to the harbour master. Uh, vessel's over a certain size in the river. Have to just radio ahead, confirm the channel's clear. Obviously it's quite tight, as you can see on the camera, just coming down the river. Can get a little busy here at weekends, often with the sailing dinghies 
and the Sea Scouts and all the smaller boats that can make life a little tricky with the larger yachts here where we are limited by draft and have to stay very much in the main channel. So we've got about 25 minutes as we, as we always do, so we're gonna sign off for a bit and we'll check back as we get ready to depart the bottom of the river. Uh, copy that VTS listening channel one, two, over. Okay, so it's a little bit fresh out here today and we've just radioed into VTS who are the port authority here in Southampton. And we can now get the boat up and going as we head down Southampton Water to Ocean Village. So just bring the camera back and see the speed here. You'll hear the commercial traffic chatting away on the, uh, on the Port Ops channel, which is channel 12 here in Southampton Water. And we do, uh, we do have, at the size we are, we have to request permission on a boat of this size just to notify them that we're running here in their controlled waters. And I've just got the little deflector up here on the, uh, on the helm just to give us a little bit of wind protection. It is quite, quite fresh here at the moment. You can just see the speed starting to pick up, the turbos starting to kick in and we're getting up and away there. You can see we're up to around a 20 knot cruise speed. I'll just show you on this screen here. This is our radar display running quarter mile increments on the, uh, bring it out here, quarter mile increments the uh, defined edges of the channel. This is the AIS track. And you can see here on our navigation system here on the iPad where the uh, defined channel is here, so the green and red markers that we have to stay between. And we will just open it up so you can see what the boat is capable of doing. So take the throttles forward, you can see that, that speed will pick up. getting a little windy so I've just dropped the audio down slightly so I can voice over. Next couple of minutes we're just talking through some fuel consumption here for those of you that are interested. We're on a fast cruise here around 18 and a half knots burning around 240 litres per hour. This is obviously a planing speed and is really getting a move on on a large yacht this sort of size. We're then going to drop the boat back to more of a semi-displacement and then eventually a displacement speed now coming down to about 13 and a half knots. We're dropping off to about 150 litres an hour per engine. Reducing further, we're down to about 11 and a half. This is typically the cruise speed on the boat. And she's down to about 100 litres an hour now per engine. You can see the display in the middle there at the bottom. We drop further now down to 11 knots. This reduces it by 25% down to 75 litres an hour. So that 11 to 11 and a half knots is really important. And then further down to 10 and a half knots, we drop to 70 litres an hour, diminishing returns at this point. So I would generally run the boat a little bit faster. So just cycle through my uh, camera system here. You can see we've got various views in the engine room. This is quite important if you're doing long distance passages and obviously keep an eye on what's going on down there in the event that there's any emergencies. You obviously try and get ahead of the game with that. Uh, so we're running on autopilot at the moment. So this is like a cruise control in the car. It's maintaining a heading. You can actually set a, a waypoint destination on the chart plotter and then it would follow to that point it obviously doesn't know that there's sandbars in the way uh, or anything in the water that you might bump into but just in order to adjust the heading we literally just 
creek that a couple of degrees and that will bring our heading round. We just see the green channel marker up almost dead ahead of us. So I've been uh, just showing you a few different speeds on the chart plotter there and also the fuel burn. Uh, we're running here at the moment, you can see just under 14 knots, punching some tide today and we're doing 100 and about 150 litres an hour per engine at the moment, so 300 litres now combined. The covers have come slightly loose where the guys put them to bed last night at the show and they've left a couple of straps off but not running along fast enough to worry about that today. Quite interesting listening to the comings and goings in the port, obviously Southampton being one of the largest container ports, busiest ports in the world, there's uh, plenty of action up ahead in the, in the docks themselves. Uh, so we do have actually, not that it's uh, relevant to a boat of this size, but 40 knot speed limit here in Southampton water and then it drops down to 6 knots when we get to Western Shelf in a few minutes time at the top of the Itchin River. A uh, nice fast rib there running alongside. There is a small boat channel either side of the main channel here itself. We're obviously staying inside the main channel today given our draft requirements on a boat like this drawing about two and a half meters and you can see this one's actually been set up it's in the old imperial measurements at the moment with plenty of water underneath our propellers so our plan has come up here you can see where we are on the plotter we will be entering into the uh, Itchen river here in the not too distant future a little short run up here into uh, ocean village here it's a, a nice city side marina you can see southampton itself is all in this area and uh, there's the lovely harbour hotel here we do a lot of events in here and uh, we, i think we're going to be alongside the pontoon here we'll find out a little bit more when we get there uh, off in the distance probably a, a small speck on the horizon up there is the 76 yacht that left a little bit earlier than us and then we're going on the pontoon as well alongside us in the uh, in the port just been around so you can see kind of what we're seeing at our eye level here obviously the uh, the windbreak is quite handy it is very windy up here to be honest it's uh, not the sort of day that you would typically be out using a, uh, a motorboat we do have the bridge downstairs which would be a nice place to go and sit out of the elements but uh, just for visibility and the fact that I do love always being outside I tend to prefer sitting up top here and we are pretty well protected no spray well off the water surface up here and it's just nice to be out on the water so yeah a couple of minutes running at this sort of speed we'll be into the the Itchen River and we'll get prepared to arrive into our final destination right so here we are just arriving into Ocean Village going to put the camera back up top there hopefully that works for you just a quick blip on the thrusters just to check they're working and we can get set up for our arrival so quite fresh in here I should think going 25 gusting 30 knots at the moment here so it's quite windy take things nice and steady so you can see the lovely harbour hotel there in the middle it was opened around four years ago very very nice place to stay a couple of very nice restaurants in there as well we do lots of events up here so just using the engines so now that we're back off the plane, not much control on our wheels, so just back onto the throttles and thrusters here. So, just spun the boat round, you can see, hopefully, on that camera up top.
what we're doing. So just nice and slow, just using the throttle controls here to bring the boat round. Fairly straightforward berth to get into, obviously lots of room around us. If we were one of the corner berths back there, it's a 66 Manhattan, just got listed for sale. A couple of other 52 Manhattans in here. Be a little bit more tricky, uh, but if you're a visitor to somewhere like Ocean Village here with the large yachts, often this is where they'll put you. These guys will do a great job of keeping an eye on them. This is their submerged office setup, quite cool here in the middle of the marina. So we've got a guy coming out to do our lines, which is it's great. So I'm just going to flick my CCTV there so you can see behind us what we're seeing. And we're just going to let the wind bring us in on a nice ferry glide here. the boat off the dock here in a nice parallel line. So Stuart's off the back there. So that's the stern on, and then he'll come forward on the bow. Put that one on as well. So this is actually shaped like a ship up here, Harbour Hotel. So that's us done. So we're going to get the boat powered down, put to bed, shore power plugged in. And we'll be back soon with another look around some of the other boats in the range. Hope you enjoyed joining us on the water today something a little bit different if you want to know any more please get in touch directly it's james at sunseekersouthampton.com or the mobile is plus four four seven seven four seven six eight six five eight seven look forward to seeing you soon